In this video, I'm gonna show you how to hang this CRST 55 foot extension cord reel. That's a whole lot of words, but this doesn't take a whole lot of steps. If you take a look at this, this is the bracket. Comes with this and all the mounting hardware that you need. I'm gonna show you step by step, make it real simple for you. Some of the features on here is that it has three outlets right here, and this actually lights up to let you know that you have power. This actually comes out 50 feet fully extended. I guess they count this plus maybe some of this cord that stays in here as 55 feet, but 50 feet is still a lot. If you pull this out, you hear it click, that's when you can lock it. And then when you pull it out more and it stops clicking, it'll retract. And this piece right here, this cord keeper or stopper, this is adjustable. So you can have it go all the way up like this, or you can roll it 20 feet out if you wanted to and use it however you want. You can mount it on the ceiling like this, or you can mount it on the wall. One thing you should definitely 100% do is get into something solid, a ceiling joist, a piece of strapping, or a stud. Or if you open up the wall and put a block in there, I wouldn't use anchors to drywall. It's just between this being kind of heavy and the force that you're gonna use to pull it, make sure you mount it to something solid. So this cord right here is four foot long. So keep that in mind when you're mounting it. I'm gonna put it in the ideal location where I have my garage door opener right here in the garage. I'm gonna put it in the middle of the garage so I can bring the cord wherever I want to. So I'm gonna do a ceiling mount. You can do a wall mount, but the process is gonna be very similar. Let's do it. So in the middle of my garage, here's the garage door opener. My outlet is over here. So I'm gonna to choose to mount it on this beam. You can put it on a ceiling joist if you want, uh, but this is gonna go right about here. Again, make sure you're close enough to the outlet and I'm just gonna hold it up where I want it. And then mark these holes right in the center. All four of them. And it doesn't matter which way you mount this because there's a set screw here, set screw here, and this is open on both ends. So it's reversible basically. So now I have those holes marked where I wanna mount this bracket. So since I am mounting this into wood, I'm gonna use the supplied wood screws. Now these are pretty big. So I highly recommend using a number three Phillips. That way this doesn't walk around on you and you end up stripping the screw or having a hard time because a number two Phillips is just gonna wobble. So use a number three if you can. And if you're mounting into concrete, they give you these sleeve anchors or expansion anchors. Basically, you need a 10 millimeter concrete bit with a hammer drill, or I believe the comparable size to 10 millimeter is three eighths. And you would drill the hole in concrete, hammer these in and take this off the washers and then Put it on here, tighten this up. This will tighten the sleeve up over this and expand and attach to the concrete. But we don't need those because we're going into wood. And the only other thing I'm gonna do just to make it easier is I'm gonna pre-drill for these screws because they are pretty thick. So this is a 9 fourths drill bit, but you can use whatever you want. I think that's gonna work good. So I'm gonna pre-drill this hole and this hole right here. And then these ones I'm gonna wait because this is uneven. I'll put my screw, my impact gun, hold the bracket up here and attach the screws. I gotta pre-drill that one. It's fine, I messed up. Mistakes happen. Get those ones tight and then I'm gonna put some shims in here to make it even. That's good. And I can pre-drill those. Now 
Now I can mount this and the opening is right here. So you can either put it in this way or like I'm gonna do to get the cord closer to the outlet, put it in this way. Slides right in like that. And now to avoid this from coming out of the bracket, I'm gonna install the supplied screw that goes right here and that's gonna stop it. Just make sure you put it on the correct end because you can put it over here, but that's not gonna do anything. Tighten that by hand as much as I can. It's gonna be a little tough to get a normal screwdriver in there. You can definitely do it, but I'm gonna use one of these. A short screwdriver would probably work the same. Good. Now that's secure. Now I can plug this in. I'm just gonna tie this up with a cable tie and I'll do the cord for the opener at the same time. Make sure I give enough slack so that that thing can move around a little bit when I pull it. Perfect. Now the last step is totally your preference. You might want to leave it like this, but I don't want it to be scraping against the roof of a car. So I want it to be just in reach right here for me. So I'm going to go like here. So to adjust this, lock it and you got two Phillips screws right here. You just want to loosen those up. And then you just pull it to wherever you want. And we're going to go 15 inches right about there. And just tighten these back up and should be good. That's perfect. So now I can just easily grab it. If I'm working over here, maybe with my table saw, I can lock it, use it right here. Only thing I want to do is keep in mind that the garage door opener is right here. So if I am bringing this all the way outside, just keep an eye on that. If I go from the side like this, it should be fine. Sweet. And it is raining, but the good thing is, this is water resistant, oil resistant, heavy duty. It actually has a built-in circuit breaker. There's a reset button on the side. So if you're putting too much power through it, it should trip. I think that's gonna come in very handy. Perfect for a garage. So if you have one of these or you are thinking about getting one, that's how you mount it. Hopefully this video helps. Thanks for watching.